Margaret McDonald, a 91-year-old resident of Pools Corner, grew up in Rhode Island and didn't move here until 1975. Still, she has seen many changes in the landscape over the years, even before the 70s, as she and her late husband Elton would spend most summers visiting the island with their family during the early years of their marriage. Well, even going into Charlottetown before they improved the roads, there used to be brooks mm -hmm. all around. You go over a lot of brooks, you know, and there were a lot of trees there. When you cut the trees down, you're destroying your water mm -hmm. because the, water, the trees hold the water. These fields are both sides of us and the one that's in the front. And they've put in, over the years, I've seen potatoes in there, I've seen grain, I've seen they let it where they let it go to hay, and then, and then soybeans, when the soybeans came up. So all of this land was, was uh, arable land, but it also was land that um, animals and, and your birds and, you know, nature could take over. Right. And um, so, but when the, when the farm stopped going and when they started putting on commercial fertilizer, which is false fertilizer, really, mm -hmm. it doesn't do anything for your soil. They used to be kingbirds, bobolinks, barn swallows. We used to have barn swallows all over the place here. No barn swallows. Um, different sparrows. See this, uh, I've lived here long enough to see the changes. There's no fields. Right. Farmers are not farming any longer. Mm -hmm. uh, there's putting soybeans and potatoes, they don't make grass. Right. Uh, the field behind here was a particularly good one. The soil up there was particularly good. Mm -hmm. And there was all kinds of, uh, of uh, wildflowers in there. Yes. That field I used to see a lot, of, and I used to hear the owl down in the swamp. Mm -hmm. There was uh, the little saw wet owl, and then the, there was what we call a boreal owl, which is a small little fella. Mm -hmm. And he goes down, he's, uh, he hunts during the day. Mrs. McDonald, whose passion about nature has never waned through the years, says recent federal government lab closures make no sense to her. The administration or people do not realize what damage they are doing. Yeah. Because to do away with those um, records, uh, this, it's just uh, it's a tragedy. Though at times she finds it a bit lonely as more and more of her friends pass away, Mrs. McDonald said there really is no big secret to her longevity. I don't know. I still can take care of myself. I have, like, I eat my breakfast in the morning and I make a meal at noontime and uh, potatoes and meat and veggies. And uh, I don't have many sweets. I don't. I have no idea why why I am, why my mind is is clear. Why my memory is good. I can still remember what happened yesterday. But whereas right. a lot of them don't, they have to go further back. Right. I yeah. can remember further back, and yeah. I have. It's it's like I have flashbacks of pictures to know right. what's going yeah. on. You know. Uh, I've always been very interested and curious and maybe... Mrs. McDonald looks back on the early years when social norms and transportation were very different from today. She recalls Elton telling her about his trips to the island when he was a child long before they met. It was one of those kids, they put the tag on with the where, where he was supposed to go, destination tag. Oh, really? <laughs> and uh, when he got to St. John, he had to change trains and he came by train and... Um, um, he would, they would see that he got on the right train, and his uncle picked him up here at the train station, which is the, uh, well, it's the, the workman's company building, okay. and we went out on Saturday night, and I'm 18 years old, pretty close, and at that time, uh, you did not go out alone with the boy. Okay. And uh, neither did, Sunday. it was a Sunday night, and we wanted to go to a drive-in movie. And my mother says, well, you can go tonight, but don't make a habit of it. <laughs>